Hello, world. What is up? Welcome to Build. I'm your host, Matt Forte, and we are here live at the Build Studio in New York City. Our next guest is a multi-hyphenate actor, producer, creator. He's spent the last eight years at least working diligently in the UK, creating opportunities not only for himself, but for the next generation to showcase their talents with his digital platform, The Wall of Comedy. Now, beginning August 24th, you'll be able to catch him starring in the new Netflix original series, The Innocents, the super talented, super awesome Purcell Ascot is here. How about that, everybody? How do we feel about that, huh? How do we... Perfect. That's, that's how I feel, too. Uh, before we bring them out, we're going to take a quick look at the trailer for the show. So let's go ahead and run that clip. We talked about this. And you agreed. This young girl. She needs us. She's in danger. We both ran away to be who we wanted to be. What happens next? Jane. Where is she? Get out! Wait! Get over! Wait! Look! Look! It's me! It's me! This gift is greater than any of us. You better make some noise, ladies and gentlemen. The great Purcell Ascot's right here. Do it up. <laughs> man. Man. Thank you. Yeah, man. <laughs> that is a trailer, and that is a hell of a show. I was telling you backstage uh, that I got a chance to see almost the whole thing. I'm six episodes deep on this. Congratulations. And I, I appreciate that. Thank you, man. Oh, of course, man. I, I appreciate uh, great content. I got to watch a lot of stuff, so it's great when I get to actually enjoy it and like, have a great show. Uh -huh. And this is a great show. Congratulations. Thank uh, you, man. I'm, I'm excited to talk to you about it, the, the love story, the sci-fi, the whole nine. We're going to get to it. We got tons of time. Cool, man. Uh, so the first thing is first. Uh, I always love asking this because I love just, just getting a sense of the, the vibe and taking your temperature here. How, how are you? How are you doing right how now? How am I? Yeah. That's a good question because not many people ask that kind of question, you know? Um, I'm good. I'm good. And, um, you know, if you could see me in the dark as I'm watching the trailer, like, I'm, I'm a, man, I'm emotional a little bit, you know, because I'm overwhelmed at just seeing, you know, what we was able to do, but also, like, my journey... Um, from when I started acting to get to this point, this is what every actor kind of dreams of, you know? And I, I think, you know, everyone can, you know, uh, see what Netflix is trying to do and the shows that they've created so far. And to be a part of that is, is honestly, man, is this, I'm humbled. What grateful. was, what was, go I was following you on Instagram, man, and I saw what was going through your head when you saw your face in Times Square. It must have been 25, 30 feet tall <laughs> on a billboard with the trailer playing. <laughs> like, what, what is in your head when you're sitting there looking at that? Man, can you process the reality? I don't think you can. I don't think you can. But you know what? I I'm grateful because, um, you know, I'm doing this promo tour right now, man, and I, um, you know, I made a choice before we started to, to bring my mum on the tour. 
and my mum's on the tour because she's helping me with like just you know the whole journey in terms of like my my makeup, my hair, and stuff like that. But I wanted to live the the experience through my mum's eyes because for her. You know, my story is that I, I was born in Africa, in Zimbabwe, and, you know, I, I went to the UK when I was three years old. And for us to be, uh, even seeing my face on that billboard, like, we, that, that, that's, some, that's something that you can't, you, you weren't able to imagine. It wasn't, it wasn't a thing that was tangible to grab or hold on to, do you know what I mean? It wasn't this, um, this is what's going to happen in your life, you know. The expectations of what I was going to do in life wasn't as, as great as that, you know. So... For for mum to see that, and my mum's in the audience right now, mum. Uh, we have a round of applause well, from mum. Can we? Um, Thank you. <laughs> but you know, like like yeah. I like I can't I can't. It's hard for me to experience it. And I feel like when I, you know, we got the we did the New York premiere yesterday. We got the London premiere next week, and I feel like that that premiere as well. I'm gonna have all my family there, all my friends in the hometown and that's what's going to I feel like I'm just going to be just just I don't know overfilled with emotion but um I'm just happy I'm just happy like that's the best way to describe it and it's not I also saw man uh Jovian's going to be a uh, cyborg and yeah, he was yeah. in the purge like you guys it just must be not only to see yourself but these boys the, the, these are your boys man you grew up with them you've been yeah. working with them for years yeah, and, yeah. and now all of that hard work you guys have, have put in you're yeah. starting to see it sort of uh, bloom and, and blossom in so many different ways. It's yeah. got to be a crazy trip right now. Trust it's me, man. Good time. Just uh, yeah, just a shout out to my boy. Uh, my, 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 I got a be my best friend, uh, Javan Wade, is an actor. He was in The Purge that just came out in the cinema, and he's now playing Cyborg in Doom Patrol. And this is a guy that I went to school with when I was 16. Uh, we produced content together. We've been acting together for the last eight years. You know, it, it's it's like a marriage that really that friendship there, man. Like honestly, like the the ups, the, the downs, but um, we're doing it together. You know, um, yeah. coming. Uh, you know, you can see a lot of UK actors that are coming to the, uh, America because of the opportunities and um, to do that journey with you know with your your best friend like it doesn't get it's any nice to have somebody else that's what i'm saying yeah, yeah because going through it with you yeah. you know like you said uh, the, the the journey is crazy the perspective it's is is fun. mad but ultimately the biggest thing is how do you keep grounded yeah. do you know what i mean how do you still remain yourself you know what i'm saying right. so it's about like don't change i i just don't, i feel like it's not, it's important for me not to change my circle keep the circle the same uh, and whatever happens in terms of what we achieve you know amazing but you know end of the day that that's our career, that's our job. But you know, my my real passion is is my family, is my friends. You know what I mean? And when I'm not doing work, you know that that's who I am. You know, and I had to make a choice in my my early career to to understand the difference between you know doing jobs like this and and uh, 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 you know excel, excelling to these kind of opportunities. But at the same time, you know, how do you keep yourself uh, consistently happy? And that's b yeah. about making sure that end of the day, you know, your career is your career, but ultimately you're happy inside. You know. Yeah, the, you know, when I said, uh, so when I mentioned the back, you were telling me uh, about uh, the short film series that you're working on. We're going to get in depth to all of this stuff, but you were blown through some of these crazy numbers. You're telling me those information, the millions upon millions of views. I'm thinking of you as the guy on the billboard. But there, you, you've done a phenomenal job of just being a regular, chill guy. And like, you, I didn't get the sense at all that you were this dude that, that had the, these grandiose things, whatever. You're just a regular dude who's doing some incredible stuff. And yeah. that's why I was like, I'm excited to talk to this guy. Like, it's going to be <laughs> fun, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are. You are doing amazing things, and, and you're putting in the hard work, and, and, and you're, you're super dedicated, and your passion's like infectious and, and, and joyous to be around. So, yeah. all right, let's 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 set some time aside. We'll get to the other stuff that you're working go, on, but go. I do want to talk about this incredible show. Yeah, uh, the Innocence. Start from the top, man. How'd you get involved with this? How how'd this come to be? I mean, it depends. Like, do you want the big, the long story or the short story? Give me the long story. <laughs> I got a long clock over there. Give me the long. Okay, story. I'll, I'll give you the long story, um, and it kind of feeds into what I do. You know, so. Let's go back. I'll go back. I'll take you back to 2016. Uh, this was, I went to Netflix's first convention. And this is when they were doing their originals, but they only had like uh, House of Cards, Orange is the New right. Black. And I went to, the, to this like uh, convention thing where they, they would do this thing where they like show, they would have all the shows, you know, and you would have all the actors come on stage and they talk about their projects. And it's something that I did this year. And uh, I was at the, the, this convention, I was in the audience and I was listening to Reed Hastings speak, the CEO. And he was addressing the crowd. And he was telling everyone what Netflix is going to do. And I just remember thinking to myself, man, I, I just want to be a part of this family, you know. And um, after they had this break, I went outside and then I bump into this guy and he's a director. And I, you know, we start chatting and, you know, it's only a brief conversation, five minutes, but we clicked. And then a year later, I get, I get this audition and it's The Innocence and it's Netflix. 
I'm, I'm super psyched. I'm just like, I just want to, yeah, like, can't wait to do, do this audition on Thursday. You know, I'm preparing for it. And then I get into this audition room. I walk in and who do I see? The same director that I met at the convention two years ago, you know? So immediately when I saw the director, I was like, this is you. And, you know, we had this rapport already and it, we, we clicked again. So, um, you know, uh, immediately I, I kind of felt something was going to happen, you know? Um, and then I went on, do, you know, to do the audition process, which was about 10 auditions. And um, I got cast, you know, in this was like June uh, 2017. Yeah. And... Um, you know, I did loads of workshops with different people and there was different Harrys, different Junes. And, you know, I met Soroka and we, we clicked, man. And, and that was that. Was that coincidental that it was the same director or did he remember you and said... It was a coincidence was that we were both, the both a part of the project. Yeah. But it was, yeah, it was a complete universe thing. But, you know, um, it, it happened and um, I, I'm just, yeah, man, I'm just grateful to be a part of it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, no, and it is a great fit. You know, um, and I'm terrible with names. Sor How do you say Sor Soraka. 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 Okay. Soraka, yeah, so Soraka. Okay, so Soraka, you said there were different, uh, uh, Harry's different Junes. Yeah. Um, and how many uh, did you, like, chemistry test with? Or was it with her and right away, boom, it was like, oh, these are the two. Because this, at the end of the day, this is a love story. Yeah. And you guys yeah. work so damn well together. Yeah. I'm wondering. I, I think um, with any show, when it's dealing with chemistry, it's important that, uh, that you know, the two leads, you you feel that authentically, especially yeah. if we're talking about a love story. I feel like others, you know, love stories that we might have seen, especially when it comes to say teen romance, it's very easy for us to kind of go, okay, cool, they're young adults, um, you know, and uh, let's just uh, make the relationship seem uh, perfect, you know. But it's important for any love story to feel the complexities of what love is. Love is a, is such a heavy subject, so. You know, I I'm, I can't remember how many people I auditioned with. It was it was a, quite a few, but I I do remember the audition I had with Soraka, and it was just it was instant, but it was something organic. You know, it wasn't something that was forced. It was just it was just it. You know, it 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 just was, and and that was it that they saw. It was enough for them to go, yeah. Did did you guys ultimately end up doing like you know off like bonding and stuff like that to kind of get yourselves there, or was it really one of those things that was so natural and right away you just all right let's start doing rehearsals and get ready for this? You know what the the truth is we got cast together I think maybe about a couple of weeks before we were gonna shoot. Really? So you know oh we we were thrown into it. You know we were straight into the read through, straight into filming, um, but that that was great because you know we were like the characters, the characters. Also, when they run away in the story, it's like any relationship changes. The moment you go, okay, cool, we're going to run away together, yeah. the, the whole dynamic, the whole relationship shifts. It's like moving in with your girlfriend or your, yeah, or your boyfriend. Exactly. It's like, okay, this is, this is a whole new type of relationship, you know? So I feel like we were walking the same journey as the characters, which is quite nice in terms of getting to know each other, bonding. But we were both, I guess, we're both newcomers in the UK in terms of this, this, you know, to be a part of a big show like this, to lead a big show like this. We're both in the same position. So we were going through the same emotions. You know, we were both overwhelmed and we were both uh, anxious. So, you know, we, we used that to, to, to bond, you know, um, to confide in each other, to talk about how each other are feeling. And, and yeah, and just to grow naturally with it, you know? This, yeah, and you, you point out that it's kind of a, a first-time experience for, for both of you as being in something sort of this scale and this level and so this global release. As someone who's created content and produced content and done this for a while, been on major networks in the UK and whatnot, could you feel the difference in scale of being on a Netflix show? Like, did everything just feel expensive? Like, did, like, what is, did you feel the difference in budget? Could you feel the difference in scale? What was it like being on the yeah, set? Or was it just I think, another great project. Yeah, no, sure. I, th I think the first, um, the read through was was overwhelming, and I feel like, I feel like I, I felt that that scale, and it was more like it was it wasn't because of we had to exceed a certain expectation. It was right. because we knew how great we, we what the script was. We knew the cast. You know, we've got Guy Pearce in the show and stuff, and he, he's a fantastic actor with such a just a huge. Uh, accolades and you know experience and stuff, but also all the other cast, they were fantastic. So I think I think the pressure was something I personally put on myself, and I remembered feeling okay, cool. This is this is I'm gonna put this on my shoulders now, yeah. and I wanna I wanna lead this show. You know I wanna you know for me being a leading actor isn't just about performing on the day. It's about how am I offset? You know am I how am I conducting myself with um, the crew, you know, how am I being helpful in just aspects that you don't really think about? Um, and I feel like Netflix don't give you that kind of expectation anyway. You know, yeah. this show, when you do watch it 
and, and you know, you've seen a couple of episodes, it's its own show, you know? I don't feel like we're trying to be Stranger Things. I don't no, think we're I'm trying to be, yeah. I, don't know, I don't know 13 Reasons Why. I feel like we're, we're allowed to be free in being the innocents. And I feel like that's the beautiful part about being with a broadcaster like Netflix. Yeah, that's the fun. That, that's the fun thing I'm watching. It is it isn't. It doesn't feel derivative of anything. It is its own sort of universe that you get sucked into pretty quickly. Yeah. Being the dude that you are, did you see it as an opportunity uh, being on this set to like, oh, is this how how they do this here? Is this how this works on this set? Is this like what this is in this world? Like, were you like taking notes to bring back with you when you go to work on your short films and your projects as well? Yeah, man. You know me, man. <laughs> I can't, like. Um, I feel like um, everything I've ever done in my life, in my career um, up until now is about just being a sponge to everything and um, to learn and not necessarily to take that back to just the short films that we produce with, with my guys and, and my team. It was also, you know, just as an actor, like I just wanted to just watch how the Scandinavian actors would work. How does Guy Pierce work? What does he do? And seeing the discipline, seeing the focus and the professionalism. And that, that was like, okay, cool. Like, I'm inspired now to take this on and, you know, uh, put this back into whether it's The Innocence or whatever project I'm going to do in my life. You know, I, I've, um, I've come away with such, such an amount of knowledge that I didn't think I was going to, you know, uh, yeah. uh, receive, you know. That's that's a pretty awesome thing to, to get yeah. out of those experiences. Yeah, no, thank it, you. There's only one way to do it, you know, yeah. and that's to be there and see these other people do it. Man, Guy yeah. Pierce for crying out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, like you said, the entire cast is amazing, but there's something to be said about being able to sit there and just watch Guy Pierce work <laughs> for a little bit. Like, um, you know, talking about those other projects that you've got yeah. going on, those things that you've been doing, you are a ridiculously busy man. I said it in the intro, multi-hyphenate. You got so much happening. Thank you, man. Talk to me about, uh, one, how you navigate that workflow. How do you, were you balancing those projects while you were on this set? Was that stuff in the back of your mind? Do you have to yeah. compartmentalize it? How do you do it? Um, yeah, I mean, tr the truth is, uh, you know, Netflix are in the building now, and the, tr the truth is, well, I, I was, you know, trying to juggle both projects and in the long run it's not really good because of course you need to focus on what you're doing in terms of the show and making sure you've got enough energy for the performances and stuff which was always the case but I can't help um, who I am and where I want to go in life and I ha I've got this vision man and I can see it and, and the, the big thing about being in the States is that the person that I am and you know also my friends were received so well here because I, I just feel like you know sometimes we have to just be an actor you know sometimes we just have to be a writer or a producer but out here there's no boxes to that and you know when I was working on The Innocence you know I, I had support from from my producers of The Innocence you know I had projects where you know with the wall of comedy what we would do you know we're, we're a network where we produce content for you know our, our talent but also for brands you know sometimes I get a brand that will email me and say hey we want to promote uh, flower to 16 to 24 year olds like how do we do that and I'm like <laughs> okay cool like guys we need to brainstorm this idea and you know we created this this idea where you know we got um, I think it was like uh, young dancers to be in prosthetics as old old people and we had them in the street having this dance with, with, with other dancers and it was just this viral video and that's the kind of stuff that we do and create but I had the help of the producers of Innocence to go hey we know some people that can help you you know so um, ultimately, you know, um, it, it, yeah, I, it was it was a juggle, but you know, I, it's something that I have to do, you know, because I I see the vision of what I need to get to. I lo that kind of speaks to you as a creative individual, dude. That like the producers on here are excited to help you with this thing outside, yeah. and that you were even w with with your friends to to start the wall of comedy and make that thing work and make it the success you have. Uh, for for the uninitiated, just real quick, what yeah, is yeah, the absolutely. wall of comedy? Like, yeah, how did yeah. you guys? Wh why did you guys make it? What yeah, no, sure. So uh, about maybe eight years ago, we had this web series called Mandem on the, Mandem on the Wall. And um, um, after the, the growth there, we were trying to do what Issa, Issa Rae's done with Insecure, take that to network TV. Didn't quite happen for us. And in the end, because we were, you know, not being recognized for, for what we were creating, even though we had these, these, you know, millions of views, we just decided to create our own network. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> we, we did that. And, um, you know, we, we changed all of our social accounts to, to the, to, you know, from Manam on the Wall to the Wall of Comedy. We, we started to generate money from advertisement. We hired a social team, a production team, and then we started to, to uh, see other talent that were out there creating sketches on Instagram, and we would just go, hey, you've got a format, how can we help you? And we would put that little bit of money that we had into what they were doing and, and create the content there, you know? So the, the Wall of Comedy is just, uh, it's a network, man, but it's, it's more than that, and it's, grow, you know, it's gonna grow into something bigger where we wanna, you know, turn that into its own 
a subscription-based site, you know, where we create original content like Netflix in which where we can help grassroots talent. It's pretty incredible how much Wall of Comedy itself has grown in, I only think, a couple of years. You guys, what was it, 2015, officially? Yeah, we, we started, yeah, started 2015, officially. officially yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, back then we were probably on, I think, 300,000 likes. Back then, three <laughs> years ago. <laughs> what are you up to now? What's the numbers now these days? Um, across, across the board from, like, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, 8 million, 8 million followers now, man. So, Hang uh, on a second while they applaud and shock. Yeah, yeah. 8 million in three years. Yeah, you guys, yeah, think yeah, about that. You, I. Thank you, man. It's one of those things where, like, yeah, the major, like, the official major networks would sit back for years and go, man, I, I hope the kids never figure out how to do this because they'll, <laughs> they'll realize that they don't need us. And that's kind of, like, where we are in the world. Where It's not that we don't necessarily need them, but, like, there is something to be said about uh, uh, giving that, pa that platform to the people, to the youth of, of the next generation to, to create the content they want to see because yeah. we're not seeing it on and the And I think networks. there's a conversation about, you know, how beneficial is social media to us right now, you know? There's a, obviously a debate in terms of how good it is and, you know, the pros and the cons, but for us, we've been able to use social media to create our own opportunity. It's our own place to have our own voice, you know, to express ourselves. And also, for us in the UK, to create stories that we want to tell, you know, to tell stories that we don't always see in mainstream TV, but, you know, it, it comes from this, you know, authentic, diverse uh, voices. And um, I think that that was the most special part to what we're doing is because we can, we can create content that people... Are, are you know they want to see and and it, it does sell but you know sometimes we have to prove the concept we have to get the millions of views in order to go hey network tv you know this this works now but the the the, the future now for us is online is expanding you know and i believe you know streaming has 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 shown us the way in terms of music in terms of uh content the way it's all going so for us you know we want to con you know continue to expand in that area you know, we're open to working with TV and, and growing, you know, forms in there. But at the same time, like, what else can we do socially? How else can we grow? What, how else can we connect people uh, and use content to do that? You're so freaking smart. Can I tell you something? Uh, we're going to turn over to the audience in a second. But there's something you said at the top of the interview that makes this whole thing, like, really kind of poignant and beautiful to me. And that is uh, that when you were a kid and when you were born, seeing your face in Times Square, seeing you doing what you're doing now, wasn't the most likely of trajectories for you. And it's like, yeah. one, why the hell not? And two, you have single-handed, you alone and your friends alone have shown countless millions, let's say eight million people, because that's what you got following you, that this is not an unlikely trajectory. You are someone who is passionate, who is driven, who is creative, and, and, and you made something amazing out of nothing. You should be very proud of that, Thank man. Thank you, Brian. So, yeah. And you know what the biggest thing is? It's more so that people can go, if, if they can do it, we can do it. You know what I mean? And, and you know, as an actor, I, I did that thing, that journey of, you know, you're waiting for a phone call uh, to get your, your, your next audition. And, you know, you don't know whether or not you're going to make it in, yeah. in the career that you've chosen. But why should we why should we leave ourselves in that place? Like, why not? Let's if they're not going to let us through the door, let's go through the window. If they're not going to let us through the window, I'm going down the chimney. <laughs> I'm, any way, you know, you want to get in there, you know, you, you can do it. Just just believe in yourself. And, and, and you know what I'd say just lastly, uh, yeah. you know, uh, uh, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. And that's something I've always lived by, man. Wow. Yeah. I like that, man. All right, I'm going to say it for you. August 24th, August 24th, The Innocents is all up on Netflix. You can check that out. Again, we're going to take some audience questions, but getting some business out of the way. That's August 24th. Thank Anything you. else you want to make the people aware of before we take some questions? Um, got the new short films? Yeah, sh uh, uh, just just check us out uh, with The Wall of Comedy. Uh, I'm at Perso Ascot on social media and stuff for like that. And uh, yeah, my new project, Shower Story, is on YouTube. So just type in Shower Story. Um, and 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 the biggest part, I'm here for the innocence as well. So yeah, I uh, I hope you, I hope the audience and everyone watching right now enjoys what we've created. They're definitely gonna dig it. All right, let's go ahead. Let's take some questions. We got some microphones in the room. The first one appears to be right here. Yes, yes brother. What, what was your inspiration? Uh, that acting something you wanted to pursue later on in life. That's a great question, man. Um, I think um, I think it was the. Uh, there was a few. There's a few answers to break down this question, but I think for me, first and foremost, was my teacher. I had this like amazing teacher who just inspired me to to become an actor. She just respected who I was as a person, and allowed me to to dream and to to feel like my dream was worth something. It wasn't this this far fetched idea. Sometimes being a creative, it's like how does that work out? You know, uh, financially it's not stable. But you know, I had this teacher who believed in me, um, and. Um, uh, the, the, the other part to the answer is also the ability to tell stories. I have this massive 
passion for what stories can do and how it can affect lives. And uh, if you have the right message of a story, I feel like every story is poignant to to what we see and how we carry out our lives. I feel like entertainment has shaped me and who I am and how I dress and you know how I conform myself. So I feel like being a part of projects that tell stories that liberate people is something special. That That's why I wanted to be a part of it. That's a great question. Thank you for that. Well, we got a few more. Our next one's going to be right here in the front. Hi. Um, so I was wondering, so it seems like in your past career, you've kind of done more like comedy and um, more realistic style content. So I was wondering what it was like for you as an actor delving into this sci-fi fantasy genre. Yeah, no, thank you for asking that question. Um, because it's something that we've been talking about on the whole promo tour. Um, although this is a sci-fi show, um, ultimately, it's 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 about the relationships, you know. It's about the 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 characters and what they go through, you know. Harry and June they run away from home because they they're repressed from their families and they want to be together. And ultimately, you know, if we can take out the sci-fi, does the show still exist? Can it still breathe? And you know, the, the, our answer to that is it can. And I think that's special because I feel like when it's grounded that way, audiences can be attached to it in terms of the characters, what they go through. Um, so it's not far different from anything I've created before because you know when we'd be on the floor the director would tell us you know what the feeling would be and even the shifting the shape shifting thing it's, it's not this imaginary thing that happens or it's a, a bit of green screen that kind of comes into the shot we'll, you know we do that through physical performance you know the actresses and the actors they would work out what the the physicality would be and would work that into the emotion of the of the script so um you know we were lucky the fact that you know it, it it felt real you know and if anything the shifting is a is a is a is a metaphor to identity shape shifting we do it in our lives you know whether or not we have a relationship and we get married or we have kids we're evolving as we grow you know so our shape shifting aspect to the show was all about searching for your identity and feeling comfortable in yourself you know feeling comfortable in your skin and being your truest self so you know, because of the core themes of the show in terms of that, you know, that was the, the way we can relate to it and make sure that it feels real, feels authentic, and um, for it to not feel so far-fetched for me, basically. Totally. It is, it is that, it's that my favorite kind of sci-fi and that it is the sci-fi part is almost icing on the cake. It's, it's like you've got this amazing story already, and, and yeah. you know from the second they leave in the car, you're like, oh, they're happy now. Like, <laughs> this is, this is going to turn, I can tell. Like, it's gonna, any relationship is going to, you don't see the way, you don't see it coming the way that it does. Yeah. But like, th there's so many things, it's just, uh, it's a great story to watch. You know, there's also these moments wh when, when she's shape-shifting that you see it in Harry's face, he's trying to process, you know, what's going going on what is this and like, that was the thing for me it was like how how do you process exactly. someone shape-shifting and I think the, the, the easiest place I could go to was you know that place you be in your house and you hear something and it's like you're alone and it's like no way I'm by myself there's no one in my house like anything supernatural the first instinct is that you go no like no. nah 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 I don't that I don't believe that just happened and and that was the process for Harry really you know he's got this this conflict, and it doesn't just stop in episode one. It doesn't stop in episode two. It's it's a a, a struggle to accept what this thing is. Because if it happened, you know, in in reality, I, I doubt we'd, you know, for one second believe, okay, you know, this is this is happening right now, you know. And it's not just the the idea of that happening. He's also struggling with this isn't what I thought this was going to be. I yeah. had it built up in my head that we were going to run away and start Absolutely. this whole thing, and now I've got to figure this out, and how do I feel? It's just then i got to figure out the, yeah. the, 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 what her vision is in terms of the relationship, what she wants from me, yeah. uh, our family dynamics. You know, it, it's it's There's so much layers to it, basically, yeah. for Harry to go through, and I guess for every character in the show, you know, like the whole family thing as well. Um, just a little bit about that, you know, the family dynamics, and uh, it's a, that's about just, although our families are different, and it's about accepting for who they are and, you know, uh, and, and loving them for who they are, you know? Yeah. We've got, was that one more? We're going to do one more? All right, we got one more question from sure. the audience. Uh, worries, it's man. coming from all the way back here. <laughs> Hi. I was wondering what the most challenging part about acting in this project was. Uh, man, you guys got some great questions today. Um, the most challenging aspect of this project. Um, I, think, I think for me, it's the... It's my first time working on a show where we were filming for seven months. And um, I, I love shows like Breaking Bad. I love shows like The Wire. And what they do for me with those shows is that they take such a, uh, a amount, of, they take their time in introducing the characters and the story in the world. And you see the evolutions of, um, uh, you know, uh, the characters grow and develop. And 
I think maintaining the consistency to be focused on that journey to make sure that I'm still uh, feeling what Harry's feeling, going through the emotions that he's going through, but also not forgetting what he's gone through, you know, the traumas that he's, he's seen. I feel like uh, for any audience member, for when I'm, when I'm watching something, it's like you, you just want to you, you wanna believe in what's, what you're seeing and, and it to be real. And for that to happen, I feel like you want to know that every little detail uh, you know, even in life, everything that happens happens for a reason, and it's uh, and we see the outcomes of that. You know, later on in these episodes or later on in the seasons, and I I, I love storytelling that does that. Yeah, it's a great question. Uh, those are all great questions, guys. Yeah. Thank you so much for being an awesome audience, uh, dude. Thank you so much for being here and hanging Bro, out with us. I hope you had a good time with us, man. Yeah, thank uh, you, man. Of I'm course, no, an absolute pleasure. Before you get out of here, I'll say it one last time, August. 24th on Netflix, The Innocence. It's all going to be there. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together, make some noise, and join me once again in thanking the great Purcell Ascot for being here with us. Thank, Thank you. you so much, man.